okay let us start without much uh, you know more introduction see my style is i i just want to share i am not an expert in immunology per se but i am an extremely curious person i am a doctor and i've tried to find out what makes uh, our bodies tick and i'll try to cover certain fundamental aspects of immunology in the first lecture uh, lecture what is immunology immunology is the science of uh the study of or the study of how uh, our bodies fight infection by microorganisms okay that's it it's quite simple but along with that i'll try there is no point see immunology is a very complex topic it's a extremely complex topic even for medical students and doctors and i am sure even i i don't know i don't know most of it Um, microbiologists and immunologists are there who knows a lot more so it's a huge vast topic i'll just try to cover the very basics and try to cover uh, your doubts at a very fundamental level but most more than that i'll try to uh, incorporate certain aspects of basic human biology into it so that you get a uh, overall concept of the thing all right so let us um, look at a cell um you have to understand that our bodies are made up of different types of cells isn't it how many can anybody tell me approximately how many is it uh, thousands or tens of thousands uh, millions billions or trillions just need to tell me the magnitude is it thousands of cells or tens of thousands of cells or millions of cells or even a trillions of cells trillion, trillion is yeah yes yes trillion maybe cuz the uh, largest ah. amount <laughs> no there is no largest number because uh, even if you say the largest number you can just add one to get a still larger no number. what i mean <laughs> is out, out of what you gave the I mean, <laughs> since it's also small and there'll be a lot, so I just took the largest number which you yeah, gave. Yeah, true. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, trillion is a million, million. They tell me it's a huge number. Uh, anyway, we have uh, in our bodies trillions of cells. All right. Uh, we are actually like a um, what do you say? A city, an underwater city with small, small apartments. Or you can say we are like a yeah, like an underwater city, and with the uh, Uh, the cells we can uh, we can maybe uh, categorize this each cell as a huge factory it's an extremely complex factory and uh, look at this picture now if you see uh, if you look and under, under the microscope at any point you cut our body and put on a microscope a small piece and put it under the microscope what you will be seeing is we will be seeing lot of cells wherever it is okay if it is a bone we will see osteocytes if it is in the muscle we see myocytes and in between nerves and nerve cells and then we will see connective tissue cells a lot of cells okay different types of cells are like different so you have a cell here this is a microscopic view of our body and you have a cell then inside the cell there is a nuclear nucleus there is something called as called a nucleus that is a like a you can uh, imagine the cell as a bubble okay filled with fluid and inside that there is a still smaller bubble that is the nucleus okay and there is an intracellular fluid this is full of fluid mostly water with a lot of uh, other molecules like proteins uh, sodium potassium other ions etc and then there you have uh, extracellular fluid like uh, uh this is the extracellular fluid in between cells you have fluid okay and then in between uh, the cells running along you have very small uh, blood vessels i mean vessels basically and uh, when we say vessels we mean tubes fine tubes fine tubes which may be arteries then there may be veins then there will be lymphatic channels okay so from uh, how does the blood circulate can anybody tell me how how does the blood blood circulate you have intracellular fluid you have intercellular fluid 
or extracellular fluid and then you have, you have blood okay this is how uh, the fluid is distributed in our body and in all these among these cells are lying embedded just like an underwater thing so water is a main component of our body can anybody tell me just very briefly how blood flow happens how does blood flow really uh, like the heart the heart will come okay. the blood to the arteries then ah. that arteries will branch off okay then then ah. uh, arteries will branch off and form arterioles okay then the arterioles will again branch off and form capillaries oh, which is connecting hmm. with this intercellular fluid uh huh ah, and that gives great. oxygen and needed nutrient for the cells very good excellent and uh, then that uh, will form um ventricles which then form veins and go uh -huh. back to heart again actually uh, it the drop of a hat looking up a, something like this looking up something like this and finding out a reliable source from where you can say it out is a very good skill this is what we mean by looking up uh, accurate information so this itself is a skill even that may even uh, let us know when there is a fake news or a fake information or a wrong information and how to recognize that okay that is one thing you have to know where to look at that is the most important so these facts are what you need to understand is how it happens you are right you are completely right so i'll just see this is a cell so each cell any cell in our body has got a general structure so any cell in the body if you cut it out doesn't look like this okay it doesn't look like a rectangle like that it may have various shapes as we see and various types of cells will be there which are specialized functions but if you look at a cell what you will see is uh, generally this or we all have um, drawn this and we all have seen the pictures basically you have a um, membrane you have a membrane and a bubble full of fluid inside and a wall of the bubble is a double layered lipid membrane and on the membrane there will be lot of proteins it's a lipid bilayered lipid membrane and on the membrane there will be lot of proteins some of which are receptors which can bind to other cells other molecules some of these uh, proteins are channels through which they it it, it can uh, you know um, it can selectively um allow molecules to come in and selectively allow molecules to come out so it is just like a small factory or even a city in itself so it has got doors it has got security channels it it will it will let some people out so it will uh, you know eject some uh, some someone from some other back door it will take in material then it will process it for, for example as um, uh we we saw the blood will bring in what all things what are the things which blood will bring in blood will bring in through the arterial side it will bring in oxygen much needed oxygen it will bring in glucose it will bring in amino acids and proteins not exactly protein ah, yeah some proteins also and it it will bring in amino acids it will bring in uh, fat fats it will bring in carbohydrates like sugars it will bring in um these kind of things and the cell will take in oxygen it will take in water it will sometimes take in sugars it will burn the sugar for example this mitochondria inside the cell will burn the sugar isn't it uh, you can see the mitochondria this is the mitochondria the mitochondria will burn the sugar in and uh, produce energy and this energy will be stored in molecules like uh, called atp adenosine triphosphate and it will be ready for use in the cell this and the whole cell has got endoplasmic reticulum and which is a network of you can say a skeletal network of uh, some molecules they are channels really they are channels and they are studded with things called ribosomes there are small small beads called ribosomes and these ribosomes are the play, play, place where protein synthesis happens okay and proteins are the basic structural and functional components of our body and each cell has got a lot of 
these proteins are like um, polymers are very complex molecules if you look at uh, each protein it will have a structure it will have a shape and it will have a function some are structural proteins like a brick walls of a building but some of the proteins will have very specific functions like our toasters or our microwave ovens or washing machines like that all right this is how a cell is organized it's extremely complex inside our cell too and this complexity is at a molecular level so each molecule in a cell is like a, a functional unit all right but what is inside what is uh, the thing that regulates the function of the cell can anybody tell me nucleus yeah what inside the nucleus exactly dna yeah that's correct and the dna, DNA is or, protein and uh, the dna is organized in how can you see the dna inside a nucleus by a light microscope if you see, look at the inside the nucleus what will you see the chromosomes yeah the chromosomes what is inside a chromosome <laughs> the genes from passed on mm. from the parent ah uh, here we come to an interesting uh, things these are the things which i think uh, students might need help with what i was suggesting earlier because whenever you have you have a lot of facts in the net you see, you see uh, the word gene a lot uh, what's a gene what's a dna what's a chromosome i don't know today people uh, children are much you children you children are um, much better equipped to answer these questions because you had resources when i started studying biology in 6th standard 7th standard and all that these were things which i had recurrent doubts on see people say chromosomes then they will say gene then in another class they uh, they'll take a class on dna but is there a what is the relationship between these i had no idea i had to you know go uh, go find out from books so each chromosome has got a there are pairs of chromosomes in, isn't it one coming from the mother one coming from the father okay you we has say 22 somatic chromosomes means that we have 22 pairs of somatic chromosomes that means uh, one pair is from the father and one pair is from the mother each chromosome and e each strand of the or each chromosome single chromosome which we unpair and each, if you do a single pair of the chromosome and untwist it what you will see is a single dna molecule which is all twisted up tightly coiled up with a lot of proteins and histones everything stuck on that so a chromosome is basically a like a like a like a what like a what like a like a what like a that uh, molagu baji no have you had molagu baji or you have etakya baji so some places you go uh, some places you go you will have uh, what will you have uh, some places you will go you will have baji but the whole baji will be the inside that the etakya or the molagu will be very very small tiny strand a lot of masala and uh, you know crispy things will be there uh, the batter will be there outside okay but it is called a molagu baji because the molagu is the most uh, interesting and the uh, key thing in that supposed to be but here it is exactly like that the dna the fine strand of dna is a uh, key thing but it will be all wrapped up in proteins and a uh, lot of uh, proteins basically and it will be all be um, coiled up to form a chromosome and these chromosomes are the are are uh, and this dna inside the chromosome is the controlling factor of the cell all right and what are genes then what are genes then what are genes and dna how uh, dna and genes related can anyone tell me dna is made up of genes dna is made up of genes okay fine but how does that work how does that make sense then genes are like uh, suppose we get from usually we say we get them from our parents 
So sometimes when uh, we go and we meet people, they're like, "You look like your mother, you look like your father." <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Something so those those genes are passed down. Yeah, yeah. What okay. is really being passed down is uh, DNA, and it can replicate because it is a double strand. Okay, with a complementary strand, it like a zipper. It can unlock, and the nucleic acids can come and uh, stick on to it, and then as it unlocks, it can create a two more, two double strands instead of uh, one double strand. So one du- double strand can just unlock itself, and then this base pairs will come and uh, stick to it, and then it will become two. So that is how DNA replication occurs. So that happens in the germ cells uh, for father and mother. and then it it will um, you know one each chromosomal strand has got each chromosome pair of chromosome has got your one from your father and one from your mother all right okay um but uh, again we are not completely clear about the gene no can i say mm. ah yeah please Yeah, so genes are uh, specific parts of DNA that are being transcribed to a protein. Yeah, right, right. That's true. That is true. That is true. See, how does uh, the genes act or the DNA act? Is that that DNA has got a DNA is like a molecule on which is written a code. Have you heard of code? A software, software code. in like in computers so it has got a lot of information in that dna and these um a particular section of the dna not really a, se- a single section it may be a multiple small small sections in adjacent parts but that doesn't uh, detract from our general thing so when you a particular group of a part of the dna a one part of the dna can code for say one protein one important protein so then that can be called a gene okay and the cell basically is controlled by the uh, dna by or the cell controls itself by switching genes on and off on and off suppose one enzyme or a functional protein in the cell uh, fluid or cellular fluid is deficient then the gene will get a message that this particular enzyme is deficient then that gene will turn on and produce further enzymes okay or then then information will come to it that okay these enzymes or these proteins are um or there are a lot of them and you need to shut them down so some genes will shut down so this is how the genes are uh, regulated and these uh, by genes by uh, switching the genes on and off the chromosome or the nucleus regulates the functions of the cell now what is the significance of that is that we have various different types of cells isn't it you have very complex uh, cells like a motor neuron neuron it's a long we have in, inside our brains then in the spinal cord in our peripheral nerves we have these neurons and some of these neurons are a meter long they will be extremely thin but they will be a meter long or half a meter long or a centimeters long or maybe very small inside our brains but they have a very very fine structure very specialized structure then we have red blood cells okay red blood cells doesn't have a nucleus but uh, that is uh, we have lining cells we have sperm we have ovum we have white blood cells about which we will tell you later now each of these cell has got the same type of dna you take our uh, white blood cell one of our white blood cell for for example my white blood cell then you take one of my neurons then you take one of my bone cells or you take my skin cell and then you look at the dna it is exactly the same it will exactly be the same okay this is one thing which people really don't realize even after studying a lot of biology a lot of people don't realize this fact that every cell in our body in each person's body 
but it will differ between people. It will differ between uh, different types of animals, but it will have the same type of um, DNA. Then how uh, are the cells different? What makes these cells different from one another? Can anybody tell me? Each of them performs different functions. Yeah, true. Definitely, each of them performs different functions. But how did they become so different in shape and function? Because when if they have the same DNA controlling them. Uh, in each of the cells, different genes are being transcribed. Yeah, that's right. In each of these cells, different in our development. When, when, when we develop as embryos inside our mother's body, yeah, then each of these cells differentiate into different lines, depending on what genes are turned off when and where. And even as adults, our, in, our, in our own body, different cells have got different genes turning on and off at uh, different times. And this difference is what makes the function and structure of a particular cell different. Or this is another key thing which you should know if we are uh, to look at biology. Mm -hmm. ah, this is a good uh, picture. Can you see this picture? This is an yeah. This is another. You, yeah, I need you to take a close look at this. This is a beautiful picture. See, you have this is a, a fine. This is another microscopic uh, look at what maybe let us say you take a um, cut through my forearm and tiny piece of muscle I, we take and then cut it and put it under the microscope. At uh, one level of magnification, you, you may see like this. You see one blood vessel All right, going like that. And inside the blood vessels are the red blood cells. So what does the red blood cells carry? Can anyone tell me? Oxygen. Yeah, oxygen. But what does it have inside? Hemoglobin. Yeah, hemoglobin. So we have um, hemoglobin. It's packed with hemoglobin and it has got that uh, hemoglobin. What hemoglobin is a protein, really speaking. It's an iron containing protein and this protein can store oxygen, isn't it? So where does it get its oxygen from? Lungs. Yeah, from the air we breathe. From the air we breathe. So it, uh, we take in air through the alveolus. And in the alveolar membrane, there are a lot of capillaries in which uh, red blood cells are there. So these red blood cells will uh, give out the whatever carbon dioxide is there in that uh, blood and in the inside it. it uh, the red blood cells will ca carry a carbon dioxide and will give it out uh, when we exhale, exhale. And when we inhale that uh, from that uh, air, oxygen will diffuse into the red blood cell uh, through the uh, capillary wall and then it will get attached to the RBC and then it will carry them to the periphery to the periphery and then give it into the uh, this new into the uh, cells this oxygen and we have other in the in the blood what all things we will have in the blood we will have plasma uh, this fluid is called plasma and uh, this plasma will have nutrients, sugars, proteins, everything for the cell. And it will have, uh, yeah, uh, along with red blood cells, it will, it will have white blood cells, isn't it? What are white blood cells? Immune cells. Uh, white blood cells are basically immune cells. Yes, that's correct. We have uh, two types, broad type of white blood cells. There we have many type of white blood cells. We have eosinophils, monocytes, but the main two types are neutrophils and lymphocytes. Neutrophils and lymphocytes. These are just terms which you need to uh, study. Neutrophils are a particular type of white blood cells. Lymphocytes are another type of white blood cells. But uh, there is another system which we may not know much about. That is the lymphatic system. So when the blood uh, flows from the periphery, I mean from the heart, and it becomes small arteries and then small, small arterioles, it branches out into small, small capillaries. 
and then these capillaries join slowly join together to again form veins and then these veins go back into the heart this is how blood circulation happens so what happens at the arteriolar end of the capillary is that some uh, nutrients and oxygen will be delivered to the cells and in between there will be some leakage of fluid from the blood and some of these fluids will re-enter at the venous end of the capillary but some fluid will be left into the extracellular fluid it will leak out these extracellular fluid excess extracellular fluid which leaks out are uh, you know um, channeled into very minute channels called lymphatic channels and these lymphatic channels uh, form another system in our body called the lymphatic system which is uh, and it has got a small a lot of nodes uh, which are like stations like a metro stations for the lymphatics so you have lymphatic fluid coming in from there and it has got metro stations like uh, small small nodes in our body in our armpits in our hand in our arms then in our neck near our neck in our uh, joint near our joints so you have small small nodes lymph, lymph nodes okay they are like metro stations so yeah, this lymphatic system has got a lot of lymphocytes and neutrophils and these kind of uh, cells and these nodes are packed with uh, lymphocytes nodes are packed with cells called lymphocytes so this is an interesting thing which you may not be that aware of and uh, see here they have put they have done something like called an antigen okay can you see that what are antigens this is not from the body this is not from the body what are antigens can anyone tell what are a, antigens a pathogen uh, coming outside uh, coming from mm, and, um, coming outside from our body and we will produce antibodies against them Mm. See, an antigen is a part of a pathogen, and uh, that uh, come. Then we come out to that uh, question, and that I mean, we come to the that question. What is a pathogen? What is a pathogen? What are pathogens? Uh, a microorganism that causes disease. Yeah, that's correct. what are the main organ uh, diseases caused by microorganisms that you know of can you malaria me? excuse me malaria yeah malaria malaria is an important uh, um, infectious disease then covid 19 is itself there yeah covid 19 it's a viral disease isn't it right then tuberculosis cholera 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 viral fever pneumonia chicken pox chicken pox ebola then, ebola yeah then is plague plague yeah lots rabies. and lots rabies rabies plague plague used to cause how um, you know huge epidemics see we should we should not one thing now now also this infectious diseases or pathogens kill a lot of people cause disease and kill a lot of people but in the past it was the major cause of disease in the past now we have antibiotics now we have vaccines we have better ways of sanitation good water good food uh, which is not contaminated so our uh, infectious disease load has come down but our previous generations say 100 years back 200 years back 300 years back 400 years back and all that infectious disease was the most important uh, set of diseases that caused maximum death among human beings once an epidemic comes okay you one third to half of the population sometimes used to die in small villages or towns so we cannot even imagine such a situation now uh, this is a good picture no i have just taken it somewhere out of the net Uh, this 
can you tell me what it is and virus mm, these are viral particles uh, sticking on to a surface of a cell this is scanning electron micrograph mm. so, scanning electron micrograph only electron microscope can look at uh, viruses mm. so we have what are the type of pathogens we have bacteria we have viruses we got we have fungus protozoans protozoans are single celled organisms which are slightly different from bacteria okay that's it uh, for example bacteria got uh, bacteria are prokaryotes uh, you, but protozoans are usually eukaryotes do you know the difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes anyone tell me prokaryotes and eukaryotes uh, there two types of cells mm. without nuclear and with no yeah true true prokaryotes are a very primitive type of not very primitive it's a primitive more primitive type of uh, primi by primitive don't have the nucleus yeah why by primitive we mean uh, earlier which uh, appeared earlier in evolution that is a um, bacteria are prokaryotes they are single celled organisms without a nucleus one example of a bacterium is escherichia coli which causes a, this, a type of diarrhea then you have streptococcus which causes streptococcus sore throat staphylococcus that can cause infections in wounds and boils tuberculosis mycobacterium tuberculosis tuberculosis then food poisoning causing i mean cholera e coli shigella these are all causing uh, this uh, these are bacteria which cause diarrhea we have tetanus and pneumonia syphilis uh, causing all these are back caused by all these diseases are caused by bacteria now we have viruses all right but viruses there is a difference between what is a odd one out can you tell me odd one out you virus. have all have hmm? tell me virus because they are not yeah. caused by the living mm. who is that who said virus that? i mean sangvi tarun ah tarun yeah tarun that's correct you are right you are right virus is the odd one out because we have free living bacteria we have free living funguses you know, the the mushrooms we see are fungi protozoa you look at a little bit of water under the microscope you can see freely moving bacteria and protozoa and this bacteria and protozoa inside our body in, they can be found in extracellular fluid uh, swimming about uh, if we have some disease but a virus is not exactly living a free living thing like that if viruses virus gets into our body and replicates using our cellular machinery so virus will get into the cell into our cell then it will get into our nucleus and use our cellular machinery to make copies of themselves and that will cause disease bacteria on the other hand gets into our body and not necessarily get into our cells they can they do get into our cells too some of them but they can multiply in the extracellular fluid most of the time and then they cause disease they can multiply by themselves but back these viruses are not exactly living in that uh, traditional sense of the term okay they don't so for example so this is like um you have parasites like worms tapeworm you have protozoa plasmodia uh, th that is one thing which you should know plasmodia is a protozoa which causes malaria you have fungi you have prokaryote bacteria we told we told earlier i told you earlier and you have this acella let us forget prions for now and this is a virus so the virus how does a virus cause disease it it is different from bacteria virus injects its dna or rna sometimes and it is a only organism which has sometimes got only rna it doesn't have dna it may not have dna 
There are DNA viruses too, like hepatitis virus, but many of the viruses are RNA virus, like our COVID virus. Our COVID virus is an RNA virus. All right. And that uh, COVID virus or uh, uh, COVID virus, when it gets into our cells, it, it injects that RNA into our cell and it gets into the nucleus. Then it uh, uh, integrates as a DNA into our, our own DNA, then causes it to make more and more copies of the mRNA, I mean RNA. And that is how it, uh, that entire cell fills with viral particle. Then the cell breaks open and then it splits, uh, spills the virus all over the place. Then each virus again infects new new cells. So this is a fundamental difference between viral infection and a bacterial infection. Now, now we'll come to the immunity proper. Now we don't have much of much time, so most of our time is taken up by your basic biology. But I think most of you are, uh, uh, you know, still studying the basic things. So I'll I thought I'll we'll go like that. So we have innate immunity and adaptive immunity. So in our innate immunity, we have epithelial barriers. No? We have skin and inside our mouth, we have mucosa. Inside our intestine, we have got mucosa and the mucosa has got a lining. And this is the primary, one of the primary uh, defenses against bacteria and viruses coming in. All right. And then we have in our blood and in our interstitial fluid, we have dendritic cells, then we have cells called phagocytes. And then we have small, small bombs called complement and natural killer cells. So our innate immunity can be, we can compare it to an army. Army. When our cities are attacked, these um, army men will be recruited. So what happens is that uh, this, the, uh, the capillaries, the pores of the capillary walls will open. Like that is called inflammation. So then there will be a lot of chemicals produced and which will cause vasodilatation. That means the vessels, uh, small vessels and capillaries will dilate and then small, small holes will happen uh, in the capillaries. And through the holes in the capillaries, what happens is that wherever there is infection or the pathogen has got in, you know, so there will be a general alarm produced. Hey, the bacteria has got in, the virus has come in, the bacteria is there. Come, come. So all the army men will rush out from the their barracks, then the from the capillaries. So what are these um, army men? Most of the the most important army men are the neutrophils and the macrophages. The neutrophils, which we said, white blood cells. So one type of neutrophil neutrophil will come out. Then it will um, produce a lot of chemicals called cytokines. Then it will recruit more and more neutrophils to come to that place. And what will the neutrophils do? And later the macrophages will come. In. So the macrophages are not only in the blood. Mainly it is not in the blood. They are in the tissues or in the extracellular space. So these macrophages also will come in large numbers. The first one to come will be the neutrophil. The neutrophil will start attacking the organism or our pathogen. And uh, what will the neutrophil do? It will phagocytose. That means it will just swallow it and digest it. Just like a tiger attacking and eating a goat or something like that. But it's at a cellular level. So it will go in and get a, uh, the pathogen inside and it, it can digest it. So this is how innate immunity works a lot of time. And not only that, not only, it's not only phagocytosis. There are a lot of chemicals inside the blood and it will leak out into the extracellular fluid whenever a bacteria or a virus comes in. And these are called complement factors. Then there are leukotrienes. Then there are tumor necrosis factor alpha. All these lot of chemicals will be secreted. So these chemicals can directly act, act as bombs and bullets, which will kill the microorganisms. So this is our primary defense against uh, uh, disease, uh, diseases. But then we have something known as adaptive immunity. So this adaptive immunity can be thought of like an intelligence agency. So these are intelligence, um, uh, you, th these are like, a, like an intelligence unit of an army, not an ordinary army. And most of the intelligence unit is uh, housed in the lymph node barracks, lymphocytes. 
where the lymphocytes will be waiting there. So if the innate immunity just cannot um, attack and resist that invader, what happens is that there will be um, the antigens of the, what we call antigens, which are, what are these antigens we told earlier, no? Antigens are part of a pathogen which can generate an immune response. So antigens are usually proteins or parts of a virus or bacteria, okay? they can trigger immune response. So when uh, the immunology, our immune cells and our immune system sees an antigen, oh, they'll think, oh my God, this is a signal of the enemy. We have to attack this thing and kill it. So that is an antigen. So when the antigen is seen in the extracellular fluid or it will go through the lymphatics into the lymph nodes, all right. I hope I am not too being, being too complicated. I mean, I'm being too um, confusing for you, but it's very simple. Antigen, okay, part of a pathogen. And when the immune system sees or the immune cell sees the antigen, it uh, immediately wants to attack. It. That is how the immune system works. Now the antigen can get into the lymph nodes for adaptive immunity. So adaptive immunity can be divided into humoral immunity and cell-mediated immunity. Now, uh, both depends on the lymphocytes, which are in the lymph nodes. So what happens is that antigens will leak out from the cells, uh, from the capillaries and from the extracellular food where the innate, innate immune cells are attacking the bacteria and viruses and killing them and some antigens spill out and then they go into the through the lymphatic system to the lymph nodes okay and some of the cells too what happens to some of the cells is that they'll ingest these uh, bacteria and then the in the on the surface of the cells they will present the antigen See, man, see, these are the antigens. Please come, please come. Or, so they will also go to the lymph node and present it to the lymphocytes. So the lymphocytes are the main um, uh, you mediators of the adaptive immune response. So the innate immune response is not specific. It doesn't know which bacteria has come in or which um, virus has come in. It will just go in and then attack whatever is foreign. It can only distinguish between foreign and non-foreign. It will not attack our own cells. It can attack our own cells, then it becomes a disease. But it usually doesn't attack our own cells. It will attack any cell that, that comes. But the adaptive immunity is specific. So it is like, oh, a new chap has come, man. This is the COVID-19 spike protein. You see this antigen. COVID-19 spike protein, please come. This is what we can, we have to fight against. So then the specialists come out. Who are these specialists? These are the lymphocytes. And mainly there are two types, that B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. The B lymphocytes, um, here, you know, are the mediators of humoral immunity. And the T lymphocytes are the, um, uh, the uh, mediators of the cell-mediated med immunity. So the B lymphocytes, what they will do, they will recognize this antigen. I can say, that, okay, this is the antigen, COVID-19 spike protein. I will make antibodies against it. So there will be one B cell will be recruited, especially for that uh, one type of B cell, which can especially attack COVID-19 will come out. But how does that happen? That's a more complex question. Maybe we'll let, let us, uh, that maybe we can discuss later. But whatever new thing comes out, there's always a B lymphocyte or a T, T lymphocyte capable of specifically attacking it. That's how far, that's a miracle, miraculous thing, no? How does that come out? That is a, uh, a very interesting question. But what happens is that whatever new thing we throw, throw at the body, say COVID-19, immediately some B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes out of thousands, tens of thousands, one or two or three will know, okay, I am, I can attack this. I can bind to this antigen and attack this. And they will multiply. 
they will become tens and tens of thousands of B lymphocytes, and and B lymphocytes will become things called plasma cells, and millions and millions of antibodies will be released, which antibodies are proteins, which are specifically capable of binding into that particular bacteria or virus. For example, a bacteria, we, we, that antigen, if it is a COVID-19 spike protein, that particular B cell with that particular plasma cell will proliferate and become thousands of them and will churn out antibodies that can specifically bind to COVID-19 spike protein. And these antibodies will bind means they'll go and stick onto the virus and uh, prevent it from functioning. It will also uh, make uh, it more tastier and easier to recognize for other phagocytes like neutrophils to go and eat, eat them. This is the important thing. Now, why it is called humoral immunity and cell-mediated immunity is because humoral means humor means fluid. So uh, these B cells can uh, recognize antigens which are just floating around in the blood. But the cell-mediated immunity, these T cells can only uh, react against antigens which are presented uh, to it by uh, cells, other cells. So how, why does, why do we need a cell mediated immunity is because some of the bacteria and all viruses get inside the cell and they are housed in our own cells. This humoral immunity B cells cannot attack those uh, bacteria and viruses, but cell mediate, mediated immunity T cells can attack our own cells which house bacteria and viruses. So even if our own cells have got full of bacteria and virus, uh, and they will have antigens on their cell membranes. It will attack that um, cell and kill them. So this is the function of the cell mediated T cells. So there are various types of uh, T cells, T helper cells, T cytotoxic T cells. So they will, they can directly attack them. How do they attack them? They can phagocytose them. They can bomb them with the chemicals. And these are the ways in which they can attack it. And then there are memory cells. So whenever you have one infection, people know this, knew this from ancient times, isn't it? Once you get chicken box, you may never get chicken box. Once you are vaccinated against a particular disease, uh, you may not get that disease again. What we are doing is, we are priming our body with a disease or an antigen. And that once we have mounted an adaptive immune response and brought in the B cells and T cells and lymphocytes and we have adapted and we have thwarted the infection and the infection is gone. Next time when that same type of pathogen comes in, our immune cells can immediately recognize that because there will be memory cells will be there antibodies will be there. But even if the antibodies uh, slowly taper off over months or years in our blood, there will be memory cells which have specific memory of the encounter with our this particular uh, organs. And they can be recruited very fast. Then they will, uh, oh, this is that same type of guy who came in last year. No, I know, we know how to tackle them. So these people will jump in, attack them, and kill these pathogens. So the next time we get that same disease, it is going to be much milder, or we may not get that disease at all, because we will be successful in uh, combating it. So that is a lot. I think I have talked a lot now, and I'm going to stop, because we will not be able to take in much more information than this, isn't it? Maybe we can take questions. Have you understood anything? Because I have really, really pushed through a lot of information in the last few and uh, this thing, but this is the only way to say it. All right. If you want to cover immunology, the basics in the fastest and the most simple manner possible, this is, this is probably the only way. But I think we got it, no? I hope.
what do you say yeah i understood the basic uh, like how it happens mm. but any uh, the uh, terminology used or any uh, words any, any, used those any clarifications uh, you want please ask i'll summarize uh, the whole thing for you once more infectious diseases are caused by pathogens they can they can be bacteria they can be viruses they can be whatever it can breach the initial um, skin or mucous membrane and enter our body to cause disease lot of diseases are caused by all diseases are not caused by my, microorganisms but many diseases are caused by microorganisms so when an organism or a pathogen gets into our body there are two types of response to it the innate immunity is like the army the army it doesn't know what has come in but whatever is foreign it will attack there there are humoral or protein components there are soluble components like complement there are some chemicals some cytokine chemicals which can directly complement and cytokines which can directly attack uh, chemicals which can directly attack uh, foreign i mean uh, f- uh, foreign material or foreign um, cells and kill them then we have neutrophils which is a type of white blood cells and which can kill them and it will uh, generate a lot of uh, chemicals called cytokines which will recruit or attract more and more um, immune cells to come there then it will also uh, you know just eat up uh, the cells uh, the foreign cells and kill them and it will it will make it uh, you know bombard it with chemicals and then kill them then the macrophages will come then it will also try eat them up and then generate chemicals and kill them but then if the innate immunity is not able to stop an infection then the adaptive immunity kicks in so the adaptive immunity the innate immunity is not specific the adaptive immunity is specific for that particular bacteria or virus so it will generate the b cells will generate antibodies against it is like an intelligence unit it knows the enemy okay this is the enemy so this is the way to do it so you have an antibody specifically for that particular disease at the particular antigen then antibodies will be produced these antibodies will coat or stick to the bacteria and then um, doesn't allow it to function and these antibodies will uh, increase the phagocytosis and uh, cause other immune cells to ingest it then these b cells will uh, secrete uh, i mean generate more complement components and more chemicals to come and attack the um, foreign cells then there is a cell mediated immunity which when the bacteria or virus has already got into our cells it can attack those cells and kill them that for that we need t cells then there are the memory cells so when the same type of same intruder attacks us again we are in a much better position to mount our immune response again but we in vaccination what we are trying to do is without us getting the disease we are trying to introduce the antigen to our bodies so that a type of immune response is created so that we are ready when and if that same and, and so that uh, actual uh, virus or bacteria comes to attack us got it any questions uh, yeah uh, my question is that uh, Uh, there is antigens in bacteria and virus right yeah that's so w- why do they need antigens uh, bacteria no see it is not a particular thing we have just ma- just uh, named it antigens understood hmm. they are just uh, material or debris debris from the uh, organs they don't require the antigens they are ex- essential components of a bacteria or virus we are calling them antigens just because we can um, produce antibodies against it oh. that's all okay. understood yeah ah. thank you so it's a reverse naming actually we named the antibody first 
we found out there were antibodies which can attack uh, bacteria. Then we found out that these antibodies were actually targeting molecules of the bacteria. Then we named these molecules antigens. So that does that make it uh, clear? Yeah. Nah. Why don't we produce antibodies against the antigens in our blood cells? See, the immune system is geared to recognize self from non-self. That is uh, that that happens in our development. How that happens is a very complex question. What happens is that we generate um, infinite number of not infinite but tens of thousands of uh, combinations of uh, B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes and then when they mature in the thymus during our development and early life, there's a selection process which kills off B these lymphocytes which can mount an immune response against our own cells. Okay. So there is a kind of evolutionary mechanism happening. That, that same mechanism which causes evolution is actually harnessed by our own body to develop, to weed out any uh, lymphocyte that can mount an immune response against our own cells. So that only uh, cells which can uh, mount an immune response against other cells remain in our body. That is uh, roughly speaking what happens. Okay, thank you.